Hi everyone, this is Athena from Courage Coaching. Thank you for stopping by today. If you are new to my channel, then please click on the subscribe button in order to get notifications for any new videos that I upload. Now in today's video, I wanted to talk about how to undo the damage caused by narcissistic parents. Now obviously having parents like this, having a dysfunctional background when you were a child, having a dysfunctional family means that you will most definitely have trauma. In many ways you will have a lot of difficulty in relating to other people which is also known as relational trauma and you may also have uh, something known as complex post-traumatic stress disorder otherwise known as CPTSD. So trying to undo the damage that a parent like this can cause you and obviously when you are living with relational trauma or CPTSD it isn't a simple process. So in this video I'm going to talk about some of the basic things you can do in a more general way. Of course recovery and healing from childhood abuse, from childhood neglect and from trauma are a lifelong process. So I'm not going to tell you in this video that this is easy. It isn't. It is a lifetime of learning new ways to relate to others, of learning to trust, of changing dysfunctional behaviours that you yourself will most definitely have because this is something that you will have picked up from your dysfunctional parents. And if your parents were narcissistic, there will be a lot of things that you will have learned to do as a child in order to survive in a family like that. So a narcissistic parent is somebody that will push their child, in most cases, into serving their own needs, not the child's needs. The child's needs, unfortunately, are not that important to the narcissistic parent. They also don't have boundaries. So a child that has a narcissistic parent will not know what healthy boundaries are because the narcissistic parent will be constantly crossing those boundaries and expecting their child to serve their every need. The good thing is, however, that an adult child can reclaim their life by facing the reality that their parent is indeed flawed, is indeed toxic and may also actually be narcissistic or borderline. Narcissistic parents in particular can do significant uh, damage to their children on an emotional level. They are driven to be extremely controlling towards their children and they wield their power in the family hierarchy. They use their children in a variety of ways to maintain their own sense of self and their own inflated ego. The damage that is caused is so severe. The emotional abuse, the constant gaslighting, the constant guilt tripping, the constant shaming, the lack of unconditional love, so the love that they show their children is only conditional, dependent on what the child does for the parent. They don't allow their children to be unique individuals. They don't allow their children to have their own wants and needs. They want the child to serve them. That is their sole purpose of having a child. So how does an adult child of this sort of parent find ways to improve the quality of their life, their emotional well-being? How do they fix this terrible, terrible curse that their parent has cast on them? First of all, it's very important as an adult child of dysfunctional parents to accept that you will not see any significant change in your parent no matter how much you try to please them, to gain their approval. If you tell them that they have done something to hurt you, they will not listen, they will tell you that what you're saying is wrong, they will accuse you of being um, really abusive yourself for even pointing it out. They will not apologize for any hurt or abuse they have caused you. They are not able to repair any problems that arise in a relationship. 
So number one, accept that you won't see any change in your narcissistic parent. They don't change. Secondly, you have to take responsibility for your own life and your own choices as you are the only one that has the power to control how you respond to things and how you behave in the present and in your future. So you may notice that you are repeating certain destructive behaviours. You may notice that you are constantly attracting dysfunctional or toxic partners. Question these things. Ask yourself, why am I doing this? Why am I falling into the same dysfunctional relationship? Why are all my friends like that? Why do I always feel like I'm in relationships where I give more and I receive less? These are all questions that you ask yourself when you are trying to recover, when you are trying to figure things out. So this is very, very important. The third thing you must do and you must learn, which isn't something that you know very well, is how to create healthy boundaries and what consequences there will be when you set boundaries with your dysfunctional parents and what you will do if your dysfunctional parents cross these boundaries. It's very important that you do not enable your dysfunctional parent to cross these boundaries. You do not enable their bad behaviour or abusive behaviour. You have to make sure that you protect yourself. So if you don't know how to do this, then there are lots of articles online on how to set healthy boundaries. Um, or you could find yourself a coach or a therapist or somebody that specialises in narcissistic abuse and they can guide you in how to do this in a safe and in a protective way so you can then feel more empowered. Another important thing that you can do now that you are an adult and you are trying to recover is that you may have to invest time and energy into redefining and rebuilding relationships with those individuals who your abusive or narcissistic parents may have alienated you against as a child. So some dysfunctional narcissistic parents will have told their children that everybody else in the world is harmful, that you shouldn't trust anybody, that nobody is to be trusted. So you will carry these messages into adulthood and you may feel very uncomfortable around people. Your narcissistic parent may have told you that a certain aunt or a certain uncle are horribly toxic, nasty people and that you should always stay away from them. Try and form your own opinions now as an adult. This is very important. You can now choose who to trust and who to not trust, who is safe and who isn't. It's important to try and make changes in your relationships. Give people a chance. And remember this one very important thing. The people that you are surrounded by that feel the most familiar to you are not usually the safest people to have in your life. Familiarity is not always good when you come from an abusive background because the abusive people in your background are the ones that you're going to attract. The abusive people in your background are going to be the ones that feel most familiar. So try and give somebody else a chance, somebody that you may find incredibly stable, incredibly predictable, maybe even very boring. But these are the people that are usually the safer people. These are the ones that are different to your family of origin and these are the people that you need to try and give a chance to because they may be healthier, they may be safer. The ones that are constantly bringing drama, that are constantly negative, that are like your family of origin are the ones that you need to stay away from. This isn't going to be easy at first because you usually tend to stick with what is familiar. Humans don't like unfamiliarity and they don't like change. But the only way to uh, heal is to actually make these changes and it's to actually go into unfamiliar territory and give it a chance. Remember, healthy relationships are actually built on mutual regard, mutual trust and mutual respect and healthy relationships have give and take. So if a friend needs your support for something, you should also be able to lean on your friend for support. Relationships that are healthy go both ways. 
So this is something you will not be used to from your family of origin if you did have narcissistic parents. This is something you can actually learn to enjoy in your life now that you are an adult, now that you are away from your narcissistic parents. So make sure you create distance from your dysfunctional family and give yourself the chance to get to know what it's really like to have a good friend, what it's really like to have a rich, fulfilling life with people around you that are supportive and empathetic and that listen to you and that are truly there for you. Another very important tip that I would give you is that you have to remember that you are not responsible for your parents' happiness or for their sense of self. And that if they try and guilt trip you when you don't do what they want, remind yourself that again, that is your parent projecting their needs onto you. But you do not have to respond to those needs. You have to change the way that you relate to your family especially if they're dysfunctional and if they don't want to accept that if they don't want to respect your boundaries then you have a choice you either stay in that relationship or you cut ties with them whatever is best for your well-being is what you must do another very important thing is that you need to educate yourself on what healthy love is if you've been raised in a toxic family dynamic it will be hard for you to understand what healthy love is. It'll be really hard for you to form healthy, loving, reciprocal relationships. So read some books on healthy love. Um, research what healthy love looks like. There are so many articles out there and so many uh, social media posts. And if you need any help at all about this, then please just reach out because I have tips on healthy love and what it looks like and what it feels like. And it may be terribly scary for you um, to be in a healthy, loving relationship because the intimacy that comes with a healthy, loving relationship isn't something that is known to you. You have not seen healthy love in your family. You may have not had this modeled by your family, by your parents. Their relationship may have been really dysfunctional. So you will need to educate yourself. This is something that is very possibly completely new to you. So educate yourself on healthy love so you don't end up in unhealthy uh, relationships. This is very important. Another thing that you must do on your healing journey is to grieve the childhood you never had. Grieve the fact that you didn't have a healthy mom or a healthy dad. Grieve the fact that you were neglected. Grieve the fact that they didn't love you unconditionally. Grieve the fact that you weren't able to express your emotions that your needs didn't come first as a child, that there are certain developmental milestones that you may not have reached because your parents were incapable. Grieving is a huge, huge part of the process of healing, of rebuilding after having grown up in a dysfunctional family background, whatever that may be. It may be that your parents didn't have narcissism, but you were still neglected you were still abandoned. Maybe they were drug addicts or alcoholics. You know, maybe they had other things going on. If you feel that something is missing in your life, if you feel a sense of emptiness, then you will have to rebuild, you will have to heal. You will have to attend to the needs of your wounded inner child. We all have an inner child, and some of us unfortunately have an inner child that is wounded, that was abandoned, that wasn't loved in the right way. So we need to attend to that, care for it, and become our own inner parent to our inner child. This is easier said than done, of course, but there are ways to do this. So grieve, allow those emotions to flow, and then rebuild. Give yourself all the things that you didn't get growing up. So I hope some of these tips were useful for you. Like I said at the beginning of the video, it is very difficult to completely undo the damage done by your narcissistic parents. But if you have the time, the energy to spend on this recovery, you will get there. You will notice differences in your life. You will notice changes in your life. You just need the right guidance. You need the resilience and the strength to push through the uncomfortable feelings, to push through the changes that you will notice, the unfamiliar territory that you may end up in, 
All of this is part of undoing the damage of recovering from childhood trauma from dysfunctional family members. It's impossible to be happy all the time, but it's possible to have more moments of joy in your life, more moments where you feel safe in your body, where you are able to trust people, where you are able to have a family of your own, whether that's your five best friends, whether that's you and your dog, whether that's you and a partner, whatever makes you happy, whatever helps you feel safe in your body and your mind is what you are striving for. So that's all I can hope for that you get there. So that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you so much for listening and watching. I hope you found it useful. And if you have any questions at all, please email me at courage is all you need at gmail.com. Take care and I will see you very soon. Bye-bye.